Real reality television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Desperately wanting a family of his own, Jason Northridge has come to the stark realization that the woman of his dreams may not be sharing in his desires. Now that his girlfriend is continuing her education, he feels there's more to her late night study sessions than meets the eye. Hoping his jealousy is all in his head, Jason seeks advice from a reliable authority. I'm Joey Greco, and this is Cheers. Yeah, we've had our rough patches, um, like, but for the most part, everything's been pretty good. Like, uh, since she started school, though, like, I've seen her a lot less. She started some little exploration group, taking pictures of buildings. I've been very supportive, because I understand she wants to do something. She wants to change her life. She has goals, and I want her to be successful. But she's lately, she's just, she's been showing up late and everything. She's been blowing off our plans for school stuff. A few weeks ago, she got a new laptop. When I asked her where she got it from, she said that one of her friends from school gave it to her, uh, which seemed kind of a little unusual to me that a, a friend would give her such an extravagant gift. A few times she's been going out and she's been t saying that she's been taking pictures, um, but she showed up and she smells of alcohol and cigarettes. And I've worked in bars for most of my life, so I know that <laughs> you don't just get that smell from going out to take pictures in the middle of Dallas. Like, I've, I've just been through this too many times in the past. Been through this with other girlfriends. I've never loved them as much as I love her. I'm not gonna try to force it to make it work. If she cheated on me, then I, I just, I can't be with her anymore. She knows my history. It's complete betrayal. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Deanna Miller, age 25, a student suspected of becoming the teacher for an eager young man. Investigation day one, agents with the help of Jason obtain the suspect's schedule of classes for the college he currently attends. Detectives set up a perimeter around the complex as they catch sight of the suspect, Deanna Miller, lounging near the side entrance. A few minutes pass before a silver pickup truck pulls up and parks. Miller, seeing her ride, stands up and walks down the stairs to her awaiting chariot. Mobile units tag the vehicle and pursue the pair to a nearby fast food restaurant. Miller and her unidentified friend exit the cab, giving agents their first look at the driver. Miller and her unknown companion enter and get their food to go. On the road once more, agents follow the duo to a city park. Ground agents blend into the background while keeping a watchful eye on the seemingly platonic pair. Miller pulls out a nice-looking camera and starts snapping pictures. Miller's companion seizes the opportunity and pulls her close for a brief kiss. They finish their meal and then get on to business taking photos of the park's antique features. After about an hour, they pack up their equipment and drive back to school. Investigation day three. The suspect follows the same modus operandi as in earlier surveillance. Her companion's truck finally arrives and Miller hops in. A brief pursuit leads investigators to an entertainment facility. Inside, Miller and her companion, now identified only as Mitch, grab a few tokens and begin enjoying games. Mitch takes advantage of the darkly lit setting and lets his hands roam over the backside of an approving Ms. Miller. Having spent all of their fake funds, the couple walk out while holding hands. It appears they've not had enough childlike delight. Mobile units follow them into an ice cream shop. 
Inside, Mitch and Miller enjoy their dairy desserts before heading on to more adult matters. They arrive at the apartment Miller shares with her boyfriend, Jason. They enter and stay inside for more than an hour. The duo finally emerge and get back into Mitch's vehicle. Deanna is again dropped off at school in time for the last class of the day. Investigation Day 5. It appears that Miller has skipped a couple of classes this morning. It's soon apparent why. Mitch, with a spring in his step, bounces up the three flights of stairs to Miller's front door. Internal surveillance cameras placed earlier by Jason capture the lustful lovers expressing their desire for each other. It appears that Miller is the master as she confidently guides her pupil into the bedroom. Sometime later, Mitch, seemingly satisfied, re-enters the camera's eye while putting on his shirt. Miller, dressed much more casually now, kisses her stallion before they both exit and hit the road for further adventures. As Miller feeds her artistic cravings, it's Jason who is left with an empty heart in this recorded phone call. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? I have been just finalizing my project last minute photos and doing a little bit of editing. What are you up to? Uh, that's why we're sitting at the house. Um, what time are you going to get home? Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of in the lab, you know, just making some final touches. Okay, um... I don't really know how long this is going to take me, babe. Alright, uh, well, I guess just, just give me a call whenever you're leaving. Yeah, I can do that. I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. With all the loose ends tied up, investigators return to headquarters ready to relieve Jason of his worried mind. Coming up, the confrontation. With details of his girlfriend's extracurricular activities in hand, Cheaters calls in Jason to review the findings. As his dread develops into disbelief, he remains in control while viewing the footage. Jason, we began our investigation outside of the school that Deanna attends. After class this day, she's waiting outside on the steps. Truck pulls up, she gets in. Now our detectives followed them until they arrived at a fast food restaurant. They go in, make some purchases, appear to exit with some food selections. At that point, they drove to a park that wasn't very far away. They grab a seat on the steps, and we notice that the two of them are partaking of their meal, taking some photos. I know that this is what she's involved in. But then we see an ardent exchange between the two of them. He has his arm around her, after which they complete their meal. He drops her back off at school, but before walking away, she leans in and appears to kiss him goodbye, and then she goes back inside. We started our investigation on this day at your residence. Sometime that morning, the same gentleman that we've seen your girlfriend spending time with arrives. With the advantage of the hidden cameras, there is an impassioned embrace. They retire into another area of the apartment. Sometime later, they exit. They're out capturing the urban landscape. Before later that day, he brings her back to your apartment. He comes upstairs again for a short period of time before leaving. She met the same gentleman this evening. I'm gonna call my detective now. We'll find out if he can give me an update on their exact location. Okay. Yeah, hey, we just finished up with a briefing right now, and we're, uh, we're stationed right at, actually right at the stockyards. Okay, listen, we'll load up in the vans. They're just east of here in some, there's some old buildings. Okay, all right, we'll come in dark. We'll load up and come over now. From what he tells me, it's dark inside. We don't know exactly where they are, but we'll just have to go over there and see if we can, if we can locate them, okay? Okay. All right, come on with me. Okay. 
drinking. Quiet, everyone quiet. Coming up, the conclusion. She met the same gentleman this evening. They're in a building just east of here. We had Joey flying second. What is going on? What the f is this? We're gonna project. How the f are you doing here? I've seen what y'all have been doing. Are you doing your own film project now? I've seen you at my apartment. Yeah, kind of. We got a film project. That was her apartment. Our apartment? Jason, Jason, seriously, stop. Stop. Seriously. Stop. God. Are you serious? It's not like that at all, man. I've seen it. Project partner, what the f is your problem? Bro, don't, get don't, this don't, out of here. Seriously, get this out of here. What the f is all of this? You don't get so in. This is what the problem is. We had our own film project going on, so Jason camera inside his apartment. So we know that when you I went over there, I saw everything. Oh, yeah, we're very serious. I saw everything. Playing around. You brought cameras or something? Yes. Inside of our apartment. No, do you think yes. Man, are you serious? It's not yeah. like that at all, man. I mean, I'm, I'm not into her at all like that. You need to shut yeah. your yeah. mouth before I knock it off. Man, are you serious? You want to see the say another word. Dude, fuck off, man. Don't say another word. Right. Easy, easy, Jason, easy. Guys. Seriously, get, get this out of here. Get this out of here. That's some We've had detectives that have been following you. Oh, that's so if you really want to act nice. That's hey. really classy. Yeah, person. and for good oh, reason. This is classy. Oh, for good reason. School project? Obviously. Okay, you're sticking with the school project story? What do you know about school, Jason? Hey. How long have you been in school? When did hey. you graduate? Hey. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, seriously. Get this out of my face. Seriously, you want to bust this serious? right now? Go away. Where do they park? They're back back in that parking lot. Sorry guys, one more person puts camera like this. Oh, I'm serious, think about it. Craig, perfect, you can see this for himself. You don't know anything that's going on right now. Down there. Why okay, we, let's get in the vans, let's get in the vans. Thank you, please get this out of my face. Seriously. Are you guys gonna seriously bring us all the way? You, from you back off. Seriously, seriously. What the f is going through your head right now? What? I saw the videos of y'all making out. Why are there videos in the first place, Jason? Because Why are you following me with that bull? You knew something was going on. I knew something was going and on. And I gave you hints. Four o'clock. Four o'clock well, text messages. Not, whether or not you gave him hints, there's something going on. Are you there's gonna? Nothing going there's on. a project We're going on. Friendship, relationship, her school. Friends don't kiss. Okay. Friends don't kiss. Yeah, friends don't kiss. Okay, I'm sorry. You know, sign respect and love, and I can't show that to her as a friend. No. You I don't do make that. out with a friend. We weren't making out. I, just I saw you. Do guys... you want me to show you what sure. our camera saw? Show us. Sure. Show and me the camera us? that you planted okay. into our apartment. Let's see this video, of Mr. Detective. Sure, Captain. Okay. All right. We have camera guys too. Okay, they know fine. how to operate cameras. Oh, okay, all right, tough yeah, guy. Absolutely. I just gave her a kiss. It's not a big deal. Oh, okay. Yes, with her on top of you on the sofa. What are you dropping off there? A load. Joey. She does laundry too. Joey, I, don't, I I really don't even need the convincing. I've seen it. I like I already know. I wanted to marry you. That man, this psycho. You wanted to marry him? I was in love with you. 
you work. Look at him. Like, I mean, this is like, get your standards up. Shut your mouth. Stop it, bro. seriously. Touch him one more time, seriously. I'm not with you now. Take this man to the hospital or something, man. He's crazy, dude. All right, Mr. Right. Bean, that's enough. All Turn right? around and leave. Oh. After about two hours when you got it ready, maybe. Thank you. Just thank you, really. I appreciate Babe, it. It's not After the confrontation, Jason is left to wonder what he did wrong. At the end of the show, we'll divulge his ultimate enlightenment. But now, welcome back Tiara Harrison, a former client ready to expound on her experience when confronting her boyfriend on Cheaters. When I walked in, really all I saw, I didn't see nobody else but him. I didn't even see the girl at first. I didn't even see her because I've never seen her before. That night was my first time seeing her, you know, and I could just, all I saw was just red, just on his face, just red. I just wanted to punch him dead in his mouth. But all I could do was just push him, just wide up, bro. I don't get it. Why? I feel like I would have never known the truth if I didn't come to Cheaters. Cheaters is what helped me get to that point. I would have still been thinking he was at, at the gym the whole time, and he's not at a Halloween party. Wow. I'm happy that I got to move on with my life, and although it hurt, it really, it really hurt my feelings, but I'm over it now. What's up, little mama? But I ain't tripping out, little mama. ain't even about you. You got that. You got that. Keep doing you, little mama. I see you. How he be working you out? How he be working you out? He be working you out? He be working you out? How he be doing? How he be doing? No, it hasn't been out. No, we've been together. We stay together. Damn, you know, no. she could have she said something at the house and she was unhappy, you know but, what I'm saying? But she was the one that was staying home waiting for you and when you were out seeing someone else. Well, that's the problem. She always at home. She always at home. It hurts to know that when you really love somebody and put your all into that person and they do you like that, it hurts. But at the same time, you just have to be strong because, like I said, I'm focused on me now. I'm not worried about him no more. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what he, what he feels, what I feel. None of that even matters because I have to put that aside and be strong for me and my son, and that's what I'm going to do. And nobody's ever going to make me feel like that ever again. Still reeling from the confrontation, Jason Northridge finds it hard to believe that the woman he confronted was the same woman he fell in love with. He states that the loss of the love of his life is taking its toll on him emotionally, and he's currently seeking solace in the arms of his church. According to Deanna Miller, Jason knew for some time that their relationship was over. She claims to have told him a number of times that she was planning on moving out. She claims that her time at school opened her up to new possibilities and that the more time she wasted with Jason were moments she'd regret. As for Mitch, he claims that he and Deanna were made for each other and that, quote, this time brains beat brawn. And I... Hey, please. Faster! Yeah, baby, I'm you. Get out of my face! You are a cheater. Now you're a comedian. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Alarmed by his live-in boyfriend's lack of affection, Sebastian Asner is starting to believe there's something sinister behind his cold demeanor. Needing answers instead of deception, Sebastian wants to bring the truth to light. I'm Joey Greco, and this is Cheaters. When I met Brian, I was visiting from Louisville, Kentucky during the summer break with some friends. We were out of the club, and I saw him, he saw me, and 
we started talking. He begged me for like a year and a half to move down here. And I finally decided I wanted to change the scenery. So I came down here and about a year ago when we actually finally did move in together, I started noticing that he just started acting real distant and shady. He put a different lock code on his phone and I don't know, he's just real secretive and acting kind of funny. When he came home from work one night, he was like getting ready to take a shower or whatever and he took his shirt off. And it's a polo shirt, so it has a collar on it, so it's kind of hiding it. But when he took his shirt off, I noticed that he had all these marks on his neck. So I asked him, what is that? And he was like, those are hickeys. And I was like, how'd they get there? And he told me that I put them there. And I was like, really? Like, that's, that's impossible. There's no way I could have done that. Because for one, I don't leave hickeys. And for two, like, we haven't been intimate. And, you know, I don't even know how long. <laughs> if I was to catch Brian cheating on me, I guess I, I honestly don't know what I'd do, but I'd probably, <laughs> probably go crazy. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Brian, age 24. A clerk suspected of giving out his sweet treats to another man. Investigation Day 2. After assembling all necessary intel on the suspect, Cheater's agents surround his place of employment and begin surveillance. Around lunchtime, perimeter units spot the suspect, identified only as Brian, exiting the shopping mall and waiting by the curb. A few minutes later, an approaching automobile draws detectives' attention. The car pulls up to a stop in front of Brian. He enters the passenger seat and gives the mysterious driver a brief kiss. Mobile units initiate pursuit and follow the pair to a nearby fast food restaurant. Brian and his unknown male companion exit the vehicle and walk across the lot. They enter and order. Brian laughs with his host as they sit across from one another, gorging themselves on a couple of supersized combo meals. The energetic lunch comes to an end, and the couple leave. Mobile units follow the couple back to the shopping mall and spy the two engaging in a long goodbye kiss. Brian eventually steps out of the car and goes back to work. Investigation Day 3. Ground agents take advantage of the crowds and venture into the mall. Nearing the end of his shift, Brian is visited by his companion from earlier surveillance, whose identity remains withheld. Detectives keep eyes on the duo as they walk through the mall and into an elevator. The detective secretly scopes out the suspect and his clandestine companion on the ride up and out of the mall. Once in the parking lot, Brian is escorted to his partner's car. Mobile units pull behind the dark sedan as it enters a nearby parking garage. The car climbs to the third floor before finding a parking space. Once the engine is cut off, the activity inside the cab revs up. Once the couple's passion subsides, they emerge from the car and share another fervent moment saying goodbye. The companion watches longingly as Brian returns to his car and departs. Investigation Day 6. Brian appears to be in the middle of an important phone call while he makes his way across the parking lot and into his vehicle. Brian finds his way to a desolate and darkly lit parking lot. He backs his vehicle into a space, seemingly signaling his companion already waiting to get in. As Brian enjoys his surreptitious affections, it's Sebastian who's affected in this recorded phone call.
With all the evidence pointing to an affair, agents pull up stakes and return to headquarters to begin analyzing the data for Sebastian's review. Coming up, the confrontation. With evidence of his boyfriend's patent dishonesty, Cheaters brings Sebastian the proof. Ready for his agony to end, he sets his sights on forgiveness until he sees the truth. Well, Sebastian, I know that you've been concerned for quite a while. I know you've had some questions and some difficulty understanding what's actually going on in your relationship with Brian. All right. Our detectives have information that they thought it was very important that you see. I know you're apprehensive, but are you ready to view that now? Oh, uh, yeah. On this afternoon, we had a detective outside of the shopping mall where Brian works. Brian exits the building and was observed having a phone conversation. Not too many more minutes after that, and a car pulls up. As he gets in, he leans in and appears to give this individual a kiss. They're followed to a fast food restaurant, and now that we see as they enter that this is another gentleman. They have a meal, return back to Brian's place of employment. There is another prolonged exchange, and then Brian goes inside and goes back to work. On this afternoon, our detective, from a higher vantage point, observed Brian at work. The same gentleman that we've seen him with previously approaches the counter. They have a conversation. Not long after that, they leave. Our detective was able to get inside the elevator and catch them in a casual exchange but they were followed out until they get to the vehicle of this other gentleman it looks like they're beginning to leave the parking area but they veer off and actually go into a covered area of the parking structure they spend some time there sebastian of a more intimate nature at that location. Before they get out, we see another romantic exchange. He gets into your car, and Brian returns home for the evening. On this day, we again observe Brian as he leaves work. Our detectives follow until he arrives at a park that's not too far away. Now Brian backs in, is joined by his gentleman friend. They leave, go to a nearby convenience store, go inside, make some purchases. They go back to the park. They steal a few more intimate moments at the park. They start to leave, but this gentleman hasn't had quite enough, goes back in to double dip, and then when they're each satisfied, they each go their separate ways. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can reach our detective for an update on what's taking place right now. Hey, uh, we just finished up with a briefing. We're, we're in the vans and we're rolling in your direction. Okay, he just left them all. His friend was there waiting for each other. They're both driving, detectives behind them. Okay. Just thinking about the fact that he's in my car right now, it's just, ugh. Arkansas dead ends into a lake, and that's where they are. Okay, we're underway right now. Come on, Sebastian. There's Gomez over here, come on with me. Ready? Let's do it, let's go. Let's go. What the hell is this? Come on, guys. Uh, can I help you? Brian, 
that? Who the f is this? Who the f is that? Who, who the f is that, actually? What are you doing here? What the f are you doing here, actually? Chilling. Why are you here? Why else would I be here? What the f do you think? I'm not talking to this. No, I'm not there talking to you. Bitch, this. Move. Can you get the camera out of my face, dude? Why are you here? This is unnecessary. What the f is all this bullshit? Oh my god. Coming up next, the conclusion. Arkansas dead ends into a lake, and that's where they are. What the hell is this? Who the f is that? Who the f is that? Why are you here? Oh my god. Watch out. This is his boyfriend. Okay, what they the f together. They live together. They live together. Okay. The truck that Brian don't drives around in. I don't need to know. Bastions. You're a lying ass mother. So? Nothing ass mother. Bitch, get your hands up, bitch. What is your problem? You, bitch. <laughs> well, you guys, easy, gentlemen. Gentlemen, calm down. <laughs> so he's been lying as much as he's been lying to his boyfriend. I don't know nothing about this bitch right here. Oh, well, so. you would, because he's been lying, and that's my point. Man, I don't got nothing to say to y'all right now. You ready? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Um, why are you trying to leave, bitch? I need my keys. I'll give them to you later. No, give me my keys right now. Keys, keys. Why is he gonna get in his little raggedy ass car with you, bitch? Okay. Give me my keys. See, I, I see. Go to the house. You. Get the f out the damn way. Come on. You are so. Move, bitch. Why you. Why you open my face, bitch? Hey, hey! Careful, careful, careful. Back up. Go home. I gave you your key. Take your ass home. Where the are they? Bitch, Over there. don't tell me to go home. You don't go know home. me, bitch. Come on. Get the out of my way, bitch. Hey, no, that's not necessary. Let's calm this down. Brian, come on, man. Get them apart. Yo, mother... Come on. Got your glasses, bitch. We'll get some new ones, ho. Get the f out the way. Punk ass bitch. Got some. You're a punk. I told you to go away. Bitch, we throw it. Gone. We throw it. Obviously. <laughs> Take you this one to find out. Be up here, man. Let's go. So that's the mother put them hickeys on your neck. Obviously. Cause they didn't come from you. Come on, Brian. Why are you talking to him? Why are you talking to him? Do you see what you're walking away with? Yeah. Not you. you. Bitch. Move. When you cheat, bitch, cheat up. Cheat up. Not down. You downgraded. Get in, Brian. Thanks, man. <laughs> Don't come to my house, bitch. Okay. Watch out. Wouldn't advise that. I'm so done with this. That mother broke my seat. Imagine that. You alright? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just we're just relaxing a little bit. <laughs> I'm cool. Okay, all right. Talk to Sebastian a little bit. Sebastian, I'm gonna follow you home. Just make sure everything's okay. okay. Right. So just drive slow, take your time. I know right now you've kind of gone through a whole lot real fast. I'm gonna follow you home and make sure you're okay. Alright, so thank you. Just drive Following the confrontation, Sebastian succumbs to his depression. Later, we'll update you on his condition. But next, we welcome back 
Dolly Bailey, the former client hoping to shed some light on her actions when confronting her boyfriend on Cheers. When I walked in that bar, I just completely flipped. I, you know, I have never been so angry in my entire life. I cannot believe that he was actually there. He was singing that song to her. I remember when he was writing that song, and I, or he just kept telling me it was about a fictitious woman. It was didn't mean anything, and you know, and then to walk in there and to see her and realize that it was, and hear him singing that song to her. I just, I, I cannot believe that he did that. What are you doing, mother? You? Huh? What the are you doing? Huh? What the are you doing? You gotta stop it. You better stop it. Come here. Come here. Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? You busted. What is going on? The videos. You man. Get in there. 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 I mean, this was a long-term, ten-year relationship. You know, for him to to do something like this. I mean, if he was so unhappy. Why did he just not end it before them? Why did he have to do this? Why did he have to go there? Ladies and gentlemen, Dolly, everybody. Yeah. Jack, are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? How long have you been seeing him? Probably about five months now. Do you know that they've been together for 10 years? Has he told you that? Nobody told me you they were done. Why don't you tell him everything you've been doing? And my house, man, that I... He did try contacting me several times, trying to work it out after all this happened, but it, there was just absolutely no way. There's there's no way that, that I could even consider ever, you know, I have more respect for myself than that. In the aftermath of the confrontation, Sebastian Asner is heartbroken that the man he gave his love to would do this to him. He claims that he has no one to turn to in his time of need and has become despondent over the past few weeks. With the help of Cheater's producers, Sebastian has finally agreed to counseling, but fears the hole in his heart will never heal. When finally reached by Cheater's producers, Brian was less than open. He would only say that Sebastian has a selective memory and wants nothing more to do with him. As for Brian's companion, he wants Sebastian to know that Brian is happy. Hey, please. Buster! Yeah, baby, I'm gonna handcuff you. Ladies. Get out of my face! Oh my gosh! You are a cheater. Now you're a comedian. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. With serious concerns regarding her boyfriend's private time activities, Brittany Hotchkiss needs to know what secrets he's keeping. Distrusting of his actions when she's not around, Brittany commissions a comprehensive examination of her relationship. I'm Joey Greco. And this is Cheaters. All of a sudden it went from us like having this perfect relationship to me not being able to reach him and me not being able to get access into his things the way he would, you know, always give me access. It was, it's just, it's different. It's like a totally different and you know it, you know. I try to talk to him and it's like now I can't even get through to him. Like it used to be where I could have conversations with him and we could really work things out. But now it's like I'm speaking, you know, a different language. He's speaking a different language and there is like no mediation. There's nothing in the middle to help us communicate anymore. It's like a wall there. I feel like most of it is my fault. I feel like I've done something wrong. I feel like, I feel like I can't make him happy anymore and that I did make him happy for a while and that it's something wrong with me. And I, I know that that may not be the case, but that's exactly how I feel. I feel like there's something wrong with me that, you know, this relationship seems so perfect and then all of a sudden he's completely turned off by me or he's completely changing his patterns or his ways. It has to be something that I did. I can't sleep, I can't concentrate. Am I gonna be by myself tonight? 
is it, in any day is it gonna end is it gonna be over I don't, I don't know if you suspect infidelity in your relationship cheaters detective agency may be able to provide you assistance exercise your right to be informed investigative charges may apply Granville, age 35, a financial planner suspected of putting his profit in another woman's dividend. Investigation day three. After two days and no movement on the case, Cheater's detectives remain diligent outside the apartment the client and suspect share. An unknown female is spotted slinking up the stairs to the suspect's front door. The woman knocks, and the suspect, identified only as Granville, opens the door and steps out onto the porch. After a brief hug hello, Granville ushers his neighbor down the stairs and into the passenger seat of his car. Mobile units follow the pair across the street to a local bar. They walk arm in arm inside and are soon spotted by undercover agents enjoying some drinks at the bar. The couple appear to be in good spirits while imbibing some spirits of their own. Eventually, the two leave the establishment and return to Granville's residence. They both ascend the stairs and disappear inside the apartment. An hour and a half later, Granville sees his companion to the door. She returns to her own apartment and Granville shuts the door, ending this day of investigation. Investigation day five. With Brittany again working the late shift at her restaurant job, agents are on high alert for further developments. They spot the suspect, shirtless, coming out onto the balcony with a phone. It's evident that his phone call was to beckon his downstairs neighbor upstairs. The neighbor, now identified only as Andy, appears dressed as if she just got out of the shower. Andy makes her way up to Granville and indicates to him that she wants something more than just a cup of sugar. Granville apparently likes what he sees and begins to grope Andy on the balcony. The two spend some time exhibiting their lust before retiring inside the apartment that Granville and Brittany share. A few hours tick by before agents regain sight of the couple. Andy exits the apartment but is not allowed to leave just yet. Granville grabs his busty beauty and delivers a few final kisses for the night. Investigation Day 8. It seems to detectives on duty that a pattern of deceit is forming. With Brittany working the late shift, they see Andy and Granville leaving their apartments almost in unison. The suspect scurries down the stairs to greet his buxom buddy by his car. Mobile units then track the couple to another nearby bar. They enter and are soon seen on the patio enjoying some beverages. It may be date night for Granville, but it's Brittany who's picking up the tab, as revealed in this recorded phone call. With a final nail in the proverbial coffin, PIs return to headquarters and begin compiling the bad news for Brittany. Coming up, the confrontation. With proof of Granville's flagrant philandering, Brittany's brought in to inspect the findings. Unaware as to the depth of his degeneracy, she tries to find peace before the truth sets her free. On this particular evening, while you're at work, a neighbor exits, goes upstairs, knocks on the door, there's a brief hug. A short time later, they exit the building, he lets her into the passenger side of his vehicle. He gets in his side. And after he gets in, they travel to a bar. That's across the street from my house. He gets the door. They go inside, grab a seat. 
They have some drinks, go back to the apartments. She goes inside. She's in there for a short period of time. She shouldn't be in my house. She shouldn't be in my house. She exits, goes down to her place. Granville goes inside. On this occasion, a little different scenario plays out. Granville's outside on the phone. The neighbor comes upstairs, sporting a robe, which she promptly opens up, exposes herself to Granville, evidently pleased. They go inside your apartment, and the light turns off. Quite some time later, the door opens up. You see a brief romantic exchange, and she goes downstairs to her apartment. We've had a detective stationed outside of your place again tonight, and we know that they're together. Yeah, right now. Right now. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and get in the van. We'll call the detective from there and see if he can give us an update on their whereabouts. Okay? You ready? Come with me. Gomez, what do you have on your end? So they went to the same bar? To the same bar that they've been going to. Okay, there, and now? Got it. No. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, we know where that is, and we're headed there right now. Meet you around back. All right, go around back when we get there. Okay, on our way. Follow me, bud. Go. Stop, stop, stop. No, no, no. Touch me. Touch me. Baby, baby stop. What's, Touch what, me. what's wrong? Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. No. Bull. 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 Baby. Easy. Watch out. Whoa. You shut the hell up. Ain't nobody you. you. Because you know better. You, you know better. Hello, you know ladies, 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 ladies. Shut ladies. your ass. You know better. Baby, stop. You know better. Baby, what are you? You know better. 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 Come on, come on. Get, you get her off here. Settle down. You should have been taking care of your business. He wouldn't have to come home in the middle of the night. Coming up next, the conclusion. And we know that they're together. Get, get her off of him. Why, why are you tripping? You already know. We don't do it like that. I know where the you live. I know where you live. I'm going to be all up in your bed, bitch. Let them, let them go. Tell them what? You ain't. I can see, bitch. I'll whoop your mother. Protect him. Get, get her off him. Baby, baby, baby. Ah. Baby, come on, come on. Come on. Break it up, break it up. What I taste like, ho? What I taste like? Don't touch my mother shoe. Don't touch that belong to me. None of y'all. The car is in the front. You the car, the car is in the front. Let's go, let's go to the car in the front. I'm not going to do this. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Whoa, 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 what? Whoa, wait, 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 y'all come kick it? I ain't did nothing. Y'all come kick it? Y'all come kick it? Let's just show me the damn video, you I ain't seen no video. Show me a video. Here. Somebody. 
Okay. 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 So oh, here, wait, wait, no, he, no, the, the problem is he doesn't remember. He don't already know, because he forgot. I don't drink that. Here, I how about this? Know. Okay, how about this? Obviously, you oh, do yeah. gotta drink a lot oh. of oh. the ring of time. You okay. up in here with this bitch. Remember that? Remember that? Okay, well, well, now look, fake ass, precious you can do whatever you want, bitch, but if you're not happy you with her, so you why are you still keeping her in a relationship? She already knows. That's my girl. That's your girl? Then why are you standing next to her? If I'm your girl, you because with me. Because you're tripping, you got all these people. This, this is where I come to hang out at, and you got all these people looking at me crazy. This is where we hang out at. We hear every day you say together. You, work. Say, you already say, know. Say, I know. Don't run, mother. Be... Don't run. This ain't, you ain't don't got run. your work clothes on. Don't I just... run. Don't run. Okay, come on, let's go. You ain't gonna keep it. No, we ain't even talk about. Come no. on, let's go. No. No. We ain't gonna talk about. Bad ass security. No, no, Make sure somebody got the mother bail oh, money. Stop. If I'm gonna whoop this ass, stop. 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 say something else. Dumb Where y'all? Bitch! That way y'all got security like bitch. Say something else! G, let's go! Come on, G! Here, take the keys. Go get in the car. Andy, your business. Go, 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 go to the car. Come on. In the front. Here, no. give her Let that fat bitch walk. Give her, give we her live her across range. the street. It broke down. No. I guess you bought them earrings too, huh? We live across the street. Why? Let that Why fat bitch walk. Why y'all let her walk up on me? Why y'all let her walk Why are you walking away? You scared? Because you scared, bitch? You scared? You scared? You scared? You scared? You scared? No. It's just the beginning. Please don't touch me. Settle down. No. Get in the car, please. She already knew. Please don't worry. Get in the car. Come she on. already knew. Come on. Come on. Come on. I ain't got the rope okay. in that hole. Say something else. Say something else. Oh, say something. But guess what? Who getting in the car? Oh, who getting in the car? That yeah, red who ass. Getting in the car? That mother yeah. red yeah. ass. Christ. Who putting gas in it? You. Uh, bitch, I ain't putting no mother gas in this raggedy ass. Why? Still Why got in the like this. Hey, Still got Case. You set this in or motion. What? All right. Or what? All right, y'all wanna play games? Y'all wanna play games? Get the away from my car. Oh, what you gonna do? Oh, you, you gonna no, no, you gonna get the come over. You, you gonna get the away from my car. You gonna get the Or what? Or what? Or what you gonna do? No. No. Cause I've been nice. You want me to act ignorant? Oh, 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 you want me to be stupid like this car. belligerent ass, ignorant ass okay. fool? Really? Got ignorant got good. Ignorant. You fat. You fat girls got good. Stupid ass bitch. I know, your man. I know you ain't talking. Uh -huh. Look at that like damn skeleton man over here. Oh, ugly ass crackhead survival looking ass mother. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know how fat ass need air conditioning. Let's go. Out of the car. Get out. Get out of my car. Get, get out. Let her go, man. Let her go. No! I don't get out of my car. Oh, get out of here. I pay insurance on this damn car. This is my damn car, too. This is my mother car, too. I don't have to get out. I don't have to get out of no mother car that got my name on it, too. Well, y'all better move the out of my way. You gonna run like a little bitch? You gonna be scared? You scared? Following the confrontation, Brittany attempts to rise above her fury to find a silver lining. At the end of the show, we'll inform you as to her success. But now, Desiree Furlong, the companion from the Melissa Fletcher case, reveals her thoughts on being exposed while on a bender by cheaters. We're just getting our drink on, and then shortly after that, you know, we got a little flirtatious, because, you know, we're drunk, we're looking to have a good time. So then we pulled over into, like, a dark, you know, spot just to, you know, have sex. And then all of a sudden, camera lights came on, and then he got pulled out of the car, and then I just really don't really remember what happened. Like I said, I was drunk. Get your ass out of the car! What the f are you doing? What is your problem? Hey, 
Okay, all right. What all are right. you doing? Well, what's your deal, dude? What is this? What is this? She's just a friend. Oh, man. she's just a friend? What's going what on? What do you mean, man? what's going on? What's you going get on? the out of the way so a little bit after the show yeah we saw each other on and off for about two weeks after that uh you know but the fact that you know he cheated on his girl that that always plays it back in mind and i'm not really looking for anything serious i'm just gonna keep shocking he's not the one like i said you know it took me two weeks to find out you know i was just having fun then it's nothing now and uh it's just nothing you know nothing serious anymore so how much have you had to absolutely no he did not drink enough as a what i drank can you say that again? I'm sorry. Uh, great. He had not drank enough what I had drank. Is that good enough for you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for love one day, but obviously, you know, I'm just going to have fun. I'm not going to jump anything I know I'm not going to be serious about, but I'm not going to just be like some old nanny, you know, sitting in bed with myself, you know. So I'm just going to go out and have my fun, and if love comes along, it does. If not, then I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Now that she's had time to collect herself, Brittany Hotchkiss has concluded that it's time to move on and away from Granville's lies. Regarding her former friend and neighbor, she says, let her have him. Cook him up and eat him for all I care. She needs less fat in her diet anyway. Brittany is currently living with her cousin until she finds a permanent residence. Granville continued to profess his innocence, claiming that all the footage obtained by detectives did not tell the whole story. He states, you need to get your facts straight before you go on ruining people's lives. Andy didn't return. Hey, please. Faster! Yeah, big I'm I'm ladies, you. ladies. Get out of my face! Oh my god! You are a cheater! Now you're a comedian! That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. After a whirlwind romance that celebrated a marriage and child, Thelma Gosling now finds time to catch her breath. Unexplained disappearances and a cold bed, however, lead her to believe that her marriage may be built on treacherous ground. I'm Joey Greco, and this is Cheaters. The day that I found out I was pregnant, he was in shock when I told him, but he said he was going to do the right thing. He was going to marry me, and it would be a happy family. He started acting different probably about a month after we were married. He just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't call like he said he would. Used to, he would he would tell me every detail, everything. To I'm going to the store. It'll take me 30 minutes. I'll be back. To now, it's he'll just leave the house, and I won't know where he's going, or what he's doing. The other day, I, I went to his truck, and I was getting the diaper bag out of his truck, and there was a Budweiser can in there, and he doesn't drink Budweiser, and he drinks Bud Light in the bottle. I mean, that's his drink. And so it, it, it made me suspicious, wondering why is that kind of beer in there? Who's been with him? I feel he needs to be a good role model for our son. We've only been married three months. In that three months, I need to know this is for real. I need him to be there for us instead of me having to worry at night that where he's at or what he's doing. If he gets hurt, you know, is, is our son not going to have a father? If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Brendan Gosling, age 36. A salesman suspected of freely feeding his desire for other women. Investigation Day 2. Using information provided by Thelma, Cheaters Field agents catch the suspect leaving work a little early. The suspect finally arrives at a medical center and exits his pickup truck. 
The suspect, Brandon Gosling, strides to the entryway, but pauses before entering. Agents spot an unknown vehicle, and Gosling moves toward the SUV. He opens the driver's door and escorts an unknown female from the cab. The two share a kiss while walking arm in arm into the facility. An additional mobile unit picks up the pair exiting a short time later. While agents ponder the nature of the visit, Gosling sends his companion off with a kiss. He then returns home for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 5. Perimeter units inform their mobile counterparts of Gosling's departure from the family home. Mobile 2 reacquires Gosling, arriving at a large, unknown ranch. He parks and promptly disappears from agent's view. Investigators dispatch a ground agent in the hopes of resuming visual contact. Gosling is soon identified in the horse corral, grooming one of the mares. Before long, a familiar face is detected walking toward Gosling. The woman from previous surveillance, now identified as Cassie Potts, offers her hardworking stud a beer. Gosling eagerly accepts the cold brew and takes a long, slow swig. If any doubt still lingers as to the nature of Gosling's relationship with Potts, those doubts are put to rest as the couple share a long and loving kiss across the stable gate. Potts playfully advises her rough rider to get back to work, handing him the grooming brush before trotting off and into the house. Agents lose sight of the suspect once he follows suit. Sometime later, mobile units watch as the suspect's vehicle pulls out of the gravel driveway and heads home for what's left of the evening. Investigation Day 7. Under the cover of darkness, mobile units follow suspect Gosling as he drives down familiar roads, but not the ones that lead to home. He arrives at the ranch house from previous surveillance and is greeted by a smiling Potts. They walk arm in arm back to the truck and speed off. Agents keep up with the couple, finally pulling up to a honky tonk. They enter the establishment and settle by the pool tables near the back. While the cowboy bootleggers play their game, it's Thelma who's behind the eight ball as evidenced by this recorded phone call. Hey, hon. Hey, baby, how are you? I'm good, where are you at? Oh, I'm hanging out with a friend. Oh. Well, I'm gonna hang out with them for a while. How long? Uh, for a while, it's an old friend that you don't know. Well, okay, well, when, when are you gonna be home? Uh, later, but I'll, I'll call you before. Okay. Love you. Love you, too. Once back at the ranch, Gosling and Potts enjoy a nightcap on the back porch. With more than enough evidence, agents pull back and return to headquarters to begin compiling Thelma's dossier. Coming up, the confrontation. With substantial evidence of an ongoing affair, Thelma is brought proof of her concerns. Distraught by the unknown, she prepares to observe her husband's dark secret. Thelma, our detectives do have information that may shed light onto the things that you've been seeing and experiencing around your home and in your relationship with your husband. Are you prepared to look at that now? Yes. On this day of our investigation, we followed Brandon as he left work. Now he was followed until he pulled into the parking lot of a physician. Now he waits there for a short period of time until a car pulls up alongside. A young lady gets out and they greet each other with a hug. Now they go inside the physician's office and after some time they exit and they go their separate ways. On this evening, we follow Brandon as he leaves work. Our detectives followed him as he went back to the ranch house where we have seen him previously. Goes up to the front door, knocks the same young lady that we've seen him with previously, opens the door, lets him in. 
They are there for a short period of time before exiting, and they are followed to a local bar. They are engaged in a game of billiards, and after pocketing some of his balls, he is rewarded with a passionate show of affection. Later that evening, they drive back to the ranch, but once they arrived back at the ranch, there is continued amorous activity on the porch, and that's where Brandon stayed for the remainder of the evening. I know you're an intelligent woman. You know where we are right now. Where did Brandon tell you he was going to be tonight? At the rodeo. On his way to the rodeo, he picked up the same young lady that we've seen him with before. So he's here now? He's here now, and he's with this young lady. Are you sure this is something you want to continue with? Yes. All right, come on with me. Okay, where are we headed? Holly, you mean we have to take it inside, ready to lift? All right, come on, let's go. They're over there by the blue machine, go around the front. Come on. Damn. Oh my. Who are you? Oh. Who are you? Who are you? What Ladies. in the world? I'm his girlfriend. You yeah. Bring this here. Yeah. Well, Brandon, what, were you going to say anything to her? Eventually, where, where would it, ha where would it have here. to happen? Not here. It wasn't going to happen here, but not, not like this. Well, how? I mean, it's not like you didn't have it'd enough been, time. It would have been something totally different than this right now. You have a child. Yeah, I do. Right? I There's do. nine months there. Yeah. How long is. is this relationship going on? A couple of months. A couple of months. Okay. How much longer do you think it would have taken for you to tell your wife I don't know. that you had a, had a girlfriend? Your son. Look you at him. You can't do this, sir. What in the world? You got a family? What is this for? You know, I got to go. Y'all can't what do this here. Where are you going? Where are you going? Coming up, the conclusion. On his way to the rodeo, he picked up the same young lady. I'm his girlfriend. Where are you going? Brandon. Brandon. Talk to me. I will, but we ain't going to do it in there. That's, that's ridiculous to bring all this out here. You should have brought it to me. You shouldn't have brought it outside our family. Talk to me. You had to bring it to the rodeo? You shouldn't have been here. You should have been at home caring for your son and your wife. We just go where the story takes us. And tonight, this is where it was. Who is she? Who is she? A friend. And I didn't mean for any of that to happen. It yes. just did. And I'm sorry. But I don't know what else to say. Uh, what led you into the arms of another woman? We, just, uh, we always have arguments and everything going on every now and then. And it just comes down to this. Why are and you going to do camera. this? I don't understand. I'm his wife. I never knew he was married. He has a child, a two-month-old child. Sorry. How did the two of you meet? Um, at a bar. Man, get that thing out of here. Go. Get. Y'all don't need. Y'all don't need to be here. I didn't even know he was married. He doesn't wear a ring. We go out every other night, so I mean. Where's your ring? Where's your ring? Where's the ring? It's at the house. You stood in front of God and everybody and said those vows. Yes, I did. They were forever, supposed to be forever. They were, but... Obviously not, if you're sleeping with somebody else. I think it's wise that you know you like what the person me. that you're involved with, right. you know what they're capable of. Of course, I'm, I'm glad I know that. Never have time for me. Okay. <laughs> you should be at home taking care of your son. Do you not love me? After all we've been through, you don't love me, and you're willing to go off and f somebody else. I did it one time, yes. I don't think so. One time. That is so obviously a lie. You've been with me forever, like six months. We go out every night, every phone call. Every I mean, night? Really? So you're working and you're with her? 
he's been with me every night for the last six months, or at least every other night. There's been times that I have worked, and there's, but yeah, there's really been times worked. I've been with her too. You're not the same person. Who are you? You know, I don't need any of this, really. I don't. No, but but no. you brought you made this I happen. Understand I you brought this upon yourself. So for you to run out now, and I'll take care of it's kind of cowardly. Go. That's fine. I'll take care of it as I go. You figuring out as you go along is, isn't really going to help them any, and that's a big responsibility. It is, but I'll take care of it as I go. Unfortunately, the, the reason that we're here is because your wife loves you. Look at these. Take them and look at them. I know. I've seen these. You destroyed his life now. No, I haven't. You're not going to be a part of his life at all. No, because you can't take that away from me. I will. It doesn't matter how much I messed up. You still can't take that away from me. I will. And I won't let you. So. I will. No, come on. Come on. Brandon. Brandon. Y'all need to get it. Y'all need to go. Brandon. That's enough. That's enough. I've had enough of this stuff. You brought this. You brought this here where I did. You brought it. Nope. You brought it here. We're not doing this. I'm not doing this. You tonight. brought her I'm here. Not, I'm not going to do this here. I'm not going to do it. Whatever. Whatever. I love it. Whatever. You can bang me for six months and say whatever. That is sad. And you walk out on your family. Well, I need that hat back. I bought it. Really? Yeah. You can't run. Really? That's what I think about you. Really, Brandon? You're not gonna talk to me? At all? Ma'am, if you need a ride home, we'll, we'll make sure that you get there Thank safely. You. You're not man enough to talk to me? Or you don't have the balls to? You're scared now. Man, y'all can get that thing and just go, go to hell with it. Really. I don't need y'all. All right, you come with me. I'm out of here. Cowboy up, Brandon. Come on, man. After the confrontation, Thelma is devastated by her husband's disastrous deeds. At the end of the show, we'll update you on her progress. But now, Paul, the suspect from the Nisha Lincoln case, comes into unmask the true culprit of his troubles when caught with another woman on Cheaters. A couple of friends of mine, they all work together. We usually all go out for drinks. Uh, they just didn't happen to be there that time. You know, nothing was going on. It wasn't like I was cheating. Uh, the Cheaters comes in with the cameras and all this, and it looked like, you know, with my girl, making it look like I've been doing something. Whatever, I might have been hugging on her a little bit. I was just going, you know, it was just drinks with a friend. <laughs> You and your bitch here? Is this what you want? Not to do that. Yes, I did. This is this your bitch? No, nah, no. Nah. This is bull. Supposed to have some drinks. You know what I'm saying? No, you, I said you've been cheating on me. Yeah, you've been cheating. Yeah, you've been cheating. What you running for? What you running for? In your Chicago Bears jacket that everybody sees you in. The other chick is a, a dumb bitch. You know what I'm saying? She saw the cameras and started making up a bunch. Uh, it's, it's all, you know, and cheaters, like I said, it's all camera tricks. I don't know what they showed her, but like I said, they pretty much drove her insane. Now I'm having problems with my girl because of whatever that you guys showed on camera that wasn't true. And I know regardless of what I say, they're going to try to make it look like I was doing something. Uh, I know I wasn't doing nothing. So, ma'am, ma how long have you been? How long Listen, have you been with him? We've been together for a while now, okay? Uh, I don't know what this is. I don't want to have any part of it. They're trying no, to make me look no, bad. No, 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 no,
guys are all getting paid for whatever you're doing and I'm getting Fighting through constant heartache, Thelma Gosling focuses her energy on her son and herself. Now that she knows the truth about her husband's treachery, Thelma has had a hard time getting the images out of her head. Thelma admits that she's at a crossroads and is waiting for guidance on where to turn. Admitting to the affair, Brandon Gosling claims to want his family back, but he admits it may not be all that simple. When questioned about Ms. Potts, Gosling claims to have had feelings for her. When contacted by Cheater's producers, Cassie Potts was adamant that she knew nothing about Thelma. When pressed on about the depth of their relationship, Potts revealed that she recently believed that she had gotten pregnant by Gosling. 